I don't care diddly squat about animals. I know. Ready, one, two, three. Hey! hey. Join us hey. up there. No, wait. Ready, hey. one, two, three. Hey! hey. Again. Hey! 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 hey. hey. <laughs> I feel like I'm at a Bon Jovi concert. How are you going, guys? Oh, what a, what a start to the show. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Since we've done a mukbang. It's I reckon been it's been six, six weeks? weeks. Yeah, because the tour was about five weeks long. The If you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about a UK <laughs> and Ireland activism tour that yes. we just finished, didn't we? Wow, what a trip. It it's was amazing. Been amazing. So we feel like we haven't sat down and made a, a video like this, well, since... Well, a look bug anyway, that's right. Exactly, yeah, 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 so it's yeah, been yeah. ages. How are you guys going? How are you? Let us know in the comments. What's and... been new in your life? Share with us. We haven't spoken to you for so long. No. I feel like, a... dear diary, it's been six weeks since my last <laughs> entry. <laughs> so a mukbang, of course, yeah. is an eating show. So it can't be a show, an eating show without food. We've got food. You've got to pause the video, go and grab yourself some food, come back and eat with us. Yes. And haven't we loved meeting people all around the world on our UK and Ireland yes. and also our US activism tours where people say, oh, I love your mukbang videos. I feel like, you yeah. know, I'm meeting with family, vegan family. Come family, come yeah. sit with mum and pop. That's a good experience, pop? isn't it? Pop, pop. It depends where you're from in the world. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, what are we eating today? I'm going to show you guys. I'm not going to extend. All right. So, is that going to work? You're going to get the blur. I'm going to get the oh, blur. Why, why does it blur? They told us how it works, and I, because you go, doesn't matter. Okay, Just anyway, how about like something like that? All right, okay. cool. So, we've got chickpeas, potatoes, long green beans, which I've cut into short green beans, kale, uh, tomato puree, aka passata, and I've put in some curry, some turmeric, some herb and garlic seasoning, and whole grain or whole seed mustard. I'm not with... crying, my eyes are leaking. It looks like I'm crying because you're telling me about the what Tri-coloured rice, brown, red and black. There you go, look at that. It's a bit of a nutritional powerhouse, isn't it? This is old school TVC. It really is. For anyone is. who's been watching the channel for a while, this is kind of how we roll. It's our whole foods mush. <laughs> very simple, very easy, convenient, it's cheap, nutritious. Very tasty. The kind of recipe that we've got in our recipes ebook. Shameless yes. plug there, but no, seriously, if you need help, it's linked below. That's it. Nothing fancy, just tasty, nutritious, delicious food. That's what That's we it. do. All right, come and eat with us. I say that before I've even tasted it, huh? <laughs> it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's always good. It's good when, it doesn't food taste better when someone else makes it for you. Yes, So definitely. Luca does most of the cooking in our house and the food always tastes good when he makes it. That's not to say that I can't cook. It's just better when someone else makes it. Mm. That's good. That's all right. Yeah, good. Good. Okay, so I think it needs more salt, and this is because mm. I've been eating more processed foods when we've been away on tour. I was having so much more vegan cheese, which I never do, and so my taste blood bloods, my taste buds have gone really bland. I mm. try to combine those words, um, and so I'm finding it hard to go back to whole foods without a lot of salt. Interesting, so, so isn't this it? Is, it's been a really good experiment. And you spoke about this in our recent podcast episode. Mm -hmm. So. Before we get into, because this video, it's not just a mukbang, we're going to do a response as well mm. to a YouTuber named Sarah Therese. We're going to do that in a little bit of time, but... Which has been much requested by yes, you guys. Yes, thank you for sending us your request. So we haven't done one of these in a long time. Long hey? time. I'm like, ooh, ooh yeah. getting back into it. Kind of built our platform on uh, response videos, didn't we? Yeah. And there's like and a, over 150 of them on our channel. Mm -hmm. Playlist link below. <laughs> it's like one big TVC plug. Some people mm. may be new to the channel if they haven't it's already true. been automatically unsubscribed by YouTube. So I better just say it just in case, hey? And if you are new to the channel and, and this is the first video that you're watching from us, please hit subscribe and continue hit to hit subscribe because you're most likely to yeah. be unsubscribed by YouTube automatically. Channel's frozen. We're not going to start whining We're not. about this. Turn on notifications. You may or may not get notified. Let's move on. It's an absolute miracle that you're actually watching this video mm. right now. All right, so <laughs> first thing, we just want to say a really quick thank you to mm. everybody who helped out with the UK tour. Quick it thank was you, amazing. But huge thank you. Yeah. It was so, have you got sourcing lips already? I may no, have. No, you're, you're good. Even if I did paranoia, paranoia, 
No one can see it. Remember, no one can I see can it. I can see it. I'm sitting next to you. Doesn't matter. We're already starting. See what it's like, folks. If others can't see it, it doesn't matter. Oh my god, everybody's watching, Luca. You're supposed to be looking in the lens. <laughs> talking like, to the people. I like looking at you. Hey, you've gone all day to look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to unsubscribe from us? Seriously. It's like so, the Costanzas, if you've ever watched Seinfeld. Oh, here That's we go. Don't get us started with the Costanzas. It's true. Uh, it's true. a bad analogy, but it's accurate analogy. As long as we don't end up looking like the Costanzas, that's all right. Well, actually, no, we won't have their waistlines. We'll be looking... We totally digress. Listen, yeah. we're saying thank you to everybody who helped that's us with right. the tour. <laughs> Shush, focus. For the hosting, for the organising, for the driving, yes. for everything. Everything. It was amazing. If you came along and we met you at mm. the workshop, the activism workshop, and you got active with us in the following days at vigils and cubes and Thank you. actions, it was so good. It was. We loved it. It was so. awesome meeting you. We really loved yeah. it, didn't we? These oh. tours have been a highlight of 2018 it's for like TBC. The yeah. Best. Probably the best year we've had in a long time. Yeah, yeah, really, time. really, really good. Yeah, yeah. massive highlights, both it, it's of the just tours. Been, and the, yeah. uh, the and march. you guys have made it. You guys have made yes, it. Yes, so. the animal rights march. Oh, wow. So much went on. So Video link below. Well, I'm just going to say, and, and by the uh, way, I'm blinking because <laughs> you're going to yell at me. I never put mascara on. I decided to put mascara on, and now my stupid eyelashes are sticking together. Can you? Oh, I've got to make that ugly mascara face. Tell, ladies, you'll know if we do this, and, and you guys that wear mascara too. Can you do this? <laughs> Try and touch your eyelashes without making that face. You can't. Anyway, unsticking. Digress yet again. So what we want to say is not impressed, is it? It's not impressed. No, I'm just sitting here contemplating <laughs> how we created a society in which women were forced to put things on their faces and in, we're in not order to look a certain way. Well, you know what I mean. We're, just, we're, we're choosing um, it because we're, we're not getting into the whole makeup no, thing, right? We've got I know. a history with you the know. makeup thing. I know. But it's not fair that, you know... I know. Just leave it. Leave it. I know. Me, don't go there. Don't go okay, there. Don't You're go still there. going right. there. I'm just explaining why I was sitting there. No, don't. <laughs> okay. That's so, good. What? Oh, what was that? It's windy. It's very windy, and I, I feel like the audio is going to be really crappy because it's windy. It's going to be fine. It's going to be absolutely fine. You just have to project. Project your voice. It's already eight minutes in. We haven't spoken about anything yet. Listen, guys. Everything that we made uh, during the tour, we're going to link down below. We've got a heap of videos, and because YouTube is not our friend, I know we've come full circle, um, a lot of people aren't seeing those videos, so we're really hoping that we get your attention here to let you know to please go and watch them. It's some really good content. Um, and share them, help us out, that's that's important. Um, also, as Luca mentioned, we have a new podcast episode out and that's like a review of the tour. We've got funny stories, things we noticed, ups and downs, travel and tips, lows. Yeah, um, yeah. cultural of, differences, observations. We almost didn't get into Ireland, we oh, had a yeah. bit of trouble at immigration, that mm -hmm. was nasty. Mm. That was like, whoa. Um, so lots of things that we're going to link down below, please go and check those out. And I, I can't help but notice that, are you making a bunt? A bunt. You're digging a hole oh, in the yeah. centre plate. See how I'm just picking on him today. I haven't even taken a bite. Yeah, I'll explain. You wait. If, I, if you've ever watched the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding, fantastic movie. Very funny. So this looks like a bunt, which is the American Greek pronunciation for bunt, actually. Oh, I should. Have... Yeah. I just said bunt. Well, no, <laughs> but that's how she says it in the film, which yeah, makes it really, that really was funny. The real word. No, it's a bunt. Oops. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> if you've ever seen a bunt, it's a cake with a hole in it, essentially. Uh, all right. Yes, I am making a bunt. <laughs> so. Also, we keep. Oh my God! Did you see that? I gotta do that in slow motion. Look. Spat that out oh, real yeah. good, Right. We're looking down, we've got our laptops. I think you can just see the top of the screen there. Sorry Excuse about that. that. Sorry. We've got a lot of notes to refer to. And you know how in previous mukbangs I keep saying my arm looks super weird when I have to reach out? Mouse, technology, uh -huh. hello, 2018. Get with it. <laughs> All right, let's get on with it, guys. This is a mukbang response video. Today we're responding to Sarah Therese, another YouTuber here on YouTube. <laughs> A YouTuber on YouTube. Yeah. Um, she does makeup uh, videos and lifestyle and. Uh, mum stuff, mum vlogs. And this is not the first response video we've made for Sarah, is no, it? No, so we've got a history with Sarah. A bit of deja vu, actually. Well, a serious deja vu. This is flash, uh, flashback to two years ago. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's fill you in. We made a response video to Sarah. It's almost exactly two years ago. It was August 25th, where September 
<clears throat> something, something early September, early September. so just over two years ago mm -hmm. um, because she mentioned in one of her Q&A videos uh, she was asking the question why do vegans care so much about animals and not about humans mm. so we made so, a very detailed response video to Sarah in fact it is probably one of the best videos we've ever made highly educational yeah. highly informative highly detailed we were a lot super of time sweet. and effort into it there was no judgment we were like Absolutely facts not. and science and it was yeah like i said probably one of the best videos we've ever made yeah um this was a lovely comment left by fellow youtuber and friend lily okay. and that says a lot because mm. she makes great content and so as content producers uh, we can appreciate other good content, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. And so, really And she's great into feedback. education and detail and information. Mm. And, yeah. So, excellent video, which of course YouTube uh, deemed, demonetized. Yeah, and they deemed it not suitable for all advertisers, so it's just buried in the YouTube archives and unless we disappeared, post it anywhere, no one will ever find it again, which is such a shame because there's a wealth of information there. So, we left this comment underneath our video just you know basically encouraging people to go down the education route not hating you know as we always do encouragement we all, that's right super positive mm -hmm. and sarah watched the video she which did. is fantastic yeah. we'll... if you're watching this video sarah hi sarah hi sarah thank you for watching the previous video two years ago and she left a great comment she, she says, says thank, thank you. you this video was super informative yes. as it was, and gave me tons to think about it did hugs from me and baby ivy so Beautiful. it was received really, really positively. Really she received 519 likes for that comment. Yep. Everything going super dandy. We replied to that comment from Sarah saying, said, Hey Sarah, thanks so much for watching. And we're so glad you liked it. If you do watch the documentaries we've listed, we know you'll be blown away. Please feel free to message us if you need any more help or tips as well. And thanks again for being someone who is willing to take action against injustice. A big kiss to that cute baby Ivy. Awesome. All good, all right? Good. All yeah. good. All good in the hood. All good in the vegan hood. We're like, sweet, that's awesome. And then, totally randomly, I don't know how long after that, but not too long no. after that, we were sent a screenshot of a comment that Sarah left on someone else's video about us. Which was a video defaming, slandering... It's just a hate video. Hate it's video, just one of yeah. those... I mean, we never watch them because it's quite obvious what they're going to say and people tell us what's in them anyway. It's the same old rubbish all the time, whatever, mouth and off. So we don't bother watching those. But it was defamatory and it was slanderous. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, and they... If anyone watching this, who's not a YouTuber, had a, such a video made about them that was defamatory and slanderous, that'd be pretty annoying. It's not nice. It's I mean, not nice. it's not nice. Especially when you're spreading a message that we are about, you know, helping animals. Justice, people on the peace, planet. respect. <laughs> Compassion, kind of good things, you know. Anyhow, so we were sent this screenshot of a comment that Sarah left on this slanderous, yucky video about us. And she said... I kind of love this video. And we're like... Whoa! WTF? Yeah, that's like totally contradictory <laughs> to the comments that we exchanged below our very educational, informative and helpful video that Sarah really liked. That's weird, with a wink smile, like, oh, aren't I being cheeky? And it's like, wow. that's really two-faced. What do you yeah. mean? What, what, what happened? What happened between Yeah, there was no communication between us and Sarah in between the comments. So it's like, that was oh. weird. Anyway, so yeah, we so, left it. We didn't know what to do and we're like, whatever. I, 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 it feels like you're going back to high school sometimes on YouTube, honestly. And Sarah, maybe you can explain if you're mm. watching this. Feel free. Um, why you would even click on one of those videos? Like... And it's funny actually because in her now she's made two videos in the last couple of days she was talking about hate watchers mm. you know she doesn't want people hate watching her channel and that's so weird and we're like rejection much maybe yeah just why would you because this was that? a hate video directed really towards a hate us video. by a hate channel yeah so anyhow that's the history with sarah so and we let it go we let because, it go and then months 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 later Mutual subscribers let us know, hey, Sarah Teresa's gone dairy free, she's yes. moving towards more of a vegan diet. Yeah, she was she's eating plant based, which is really yeah. fantastic. And we're like, she oh cool, that's great. You yeah. know, let bygones be good bygones, that's it. Um, Look, whatever her reason. The thing were. is so long as people stop eating animals, that's fine. You can think anything you want of us, you mm. can say whatever you want about us. We're not here we to be popular, care. we're just here to share the truth yes. and 
protect animals. And she had really bad uh, skin, bad acne, and so I think dropping dairy obviously has helped that out. Which As is it fantastic. does so many people because exactly. of the so strong links between dairy consumption and acne. Mm. So we're very happy for her. Mm. She's cleared up her skin, she's feeling good, that's a good thing. As so many people report mm. when they switch to a predominantly plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. So then, most recently, she put out a video called Why I Am Not 100% Vegan. Right. Straight away, the title for us, we're like, uh, you're either vegan or you're not. Mm. <laughs> Which we made a video about, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So if we thought Sarah was probably one of our best videos, uh, the, ori the original response video we made for Sarah, mm -hmm. I would say our video titled, you're either vegan or you're not, mm -hmm. is probably our best video. Probably. Which we'll also it's link below. Very comprehensive. Yeah. Um, people who actually, I will bring this up, People were asking, oh, by the way, please don't be commenting now in response to our statement, you're either vegan or you're not, without having first oh, yeah. watched that very yeah. detailed video. Like, You've got to watch that. That was scripted over a course of days. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so yeah, it's about half an hour long, a lot of detail in there. Commenting. Yeah, please. Okay. Um, so that we can have context. That's context right. is so important. That's right. And that, you know, people were messaging us when we were um, away and getting ready for the UK to us saying, uh, have you seen, um, what's her name? Kalel? Kalel's video. Yeah. <clears throat> Which was named or titled somewhat um, similarly. Yeah. yeah the, the theme was similar. Exactly. And our response is, yes, we made this video last year to answer people like Kalel and everyone who says, oh, I'm X percent vegan or I'm whatever vegan. Which so many people do. They do. Yeah. So it's not a percentage. YouTube is Please, awash with yeah, um, Watch that video videos. to understand more. It's very, very, very important. Mm. So that's our response for like everyone. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, I digress. So this um, video that Sarah put out was not popular at all. You can have a look here at the thumbs down. This screenshot was taken a few days ago. 2.3 thousand thumbs down, 1.2 up. So um, that's almost twice as many. The like to dislike ratio mm. is not always necessarily reflective of a lot. Like it is sometimes and it, is, it depends on what the video is about. For example, about. we've got some videos which have more than twice the dislikes of likes mm. doesn't mean they were bad videos on our part. No, it means that farmers are watching. <laughs> right, or, or not yet vegans who are looking for excuses not to become vegan, yeah. for example. Yeah, but, but in this case... It was a really bad video. Because a lot of the uh, comments were also coming from Sarah's not yet vegan subscribers. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it wasn't vegans going up. No, it uh, wasn't well, just vegans right. going over. Yeah. Give it a thumbs down. It was um, her non-vegan audience thinking, what on earth are you doing? Anyway, so I will just say here that um, Sarah had such a negative response that she actually had to make a second video, um, which is called Explaining Myself. So that is indicative that, you know, the push was to explain herself, which yeah. she did. So we are going to address the first video primarily yeah. and then have a little chat about the second video later sure. on. Because even though she explained herself, she didn't really, and it doesn't negate what she said in that first video, I think it's very important to respond to that. Yeah. And especially for people, you know, not just for Sarah watching, hopefully she is, maybe she's not, I don't know, but for other people that are That's questioning, right. that are confused, that are what's going on. Yeah. And also for vegans to learn about how to respond to these kind of objections. So, trying to reach a, a wide group of people here. All right, um, now we're kind of a little frustrated because as we said, the first video we made for Sarah two years ago answers like 99% of things. Yeah, so, so it's she's kind, kind of, of saying the same things. Yes. As she said over two years ago, So Mr. which we've responded to, which she watched, mm. um, and she's had two, over two years to think about. So we feel like it's a bit of a waste of time, but seeing as though she's put this out on the internet again, we have to respond again. Yeah. All right. Now, Sarah is flexitarian. So she doesn't have any dairy, but she will occasionally have some meat. Um, so they're the actions that have changed since two years ago, our first video, which is a positive step. It's great to reduce any animal products in your diet. That is fantastic. But that is not the end goal, because if we're still consuming animal products, that means we're still contributing to needless violence and suffering. We're still hurting the planet, we're still hurting our bodies. Yeah. And, and of course, we're still hurting the animals. Yeah. And as know. soon as we switch the victim, mm -hmm. reducitarianism uh, becomes, well, you raise your eyebrows, don't you? Is a little less domestic violence okay? Is a little less rape okay? Is a little less murder okay? Is a little less child molestation okay? You know, as soon as we change the victim, 
reducitarianism doesn't look so great, does it? No, it's only when we do it to animals, because it's a different species. And I should say non-human animals, because we are all animals. That's right. So, the positive things is that she's dropped dairy. Yep. She's eating like 90 or 95% yep. plant-based, which mm -hmm. is really good. Yep. Um, because, of course, 98% of the cruelty and exploitation towards animals yeah. takes place for food. Mm -hmm. So and she also doesn't wear leather or fur. So she's she's so there in so many ways, but her thinking mm. is not there. It's like her actions have progressed further than her actual understanding of it and thinking. It's very interesting. And the thinking, no, sorry, the actions have been driven a lot by health, I think, too. Yes, absolutely. And that's the thing. It doesn't matter why somebody stops eating animal products. We don't care. A lot of people, probably the majority of people, come to it for health because we care more about ourselves than we do about animals on the planet. That's just human nature. We're we, anthropocentric we as a are, species. You know, and so that's fine. I mean, if you come to it for health, that's that's awesome. But of course... And then eventually people learn about the ethics. Yeah. Most people do and, yeah. and make that deeper connection. Yeah. Because whilst 98% of the cruelty and exploitation towards animals takes place for food, mm. there are other ways in which we exploit animals, such as for clothing, for entertainment, yeah. medical testing and the pet industry. Mm. So one can be eating, even if they're eating a 100% vegan diet, doesn't make them vegan if they're still exploiting animals in those other ways. Exactly. Okay. Um, now the other positive thing is in her video she did talk about the health benefits of a plant-based diet. Um, she you know, went into length to say how good she felt and it's so much better for our body. So I thought that was really good that she was communicating those things with her audience. Definitely. And Definitely. she also spoke about, and this was really important because she's a mother of two and there's a third on the way. She was talking about how it's cheaper to eat a plant-based diet. She was saying how meat is expensive, and I think this is really important for her audience to hear. Yes. So I thought that was great. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, many people aren't <clears throat> even aware that the animal agriculture industry externalizes a lot of its costs yeah. in order to keep the price of their products low, artificially low, that is. Mm. Basically, we're not paying the true cost of animal products. If we were, right. it'd be a lot, lot more expensive. Exactly. So, so it says a lot, doesn't it? It does say a lot. Yeah. So I, I, we were you know, really pleased to hear her talking about the positives of a plant-based diet. That was fantastic. Mm. Um, and then we get into the... Crux? Well, the, yeah, the not-so-great stuff. So let's have a listen. What we've done is we've, it was very long, so we've just chopped it up and took out the key things that we wanted mm -hmm. to respond to. Let's watch and respond. When I think of veganism, it's not just a diet, it's an overall lifestyle. Not buying animal cruelty products, not buying like leathers and furs, it's more than just diet. Right. Excellent. We've already she, about that. Yeah, she, mm. and, and that is so important because so many people make YouTube videos and think just because they're having green smoothies in the morning, they're vegan. Yeah. No, it's a lot right. more than that. So I'm, I'm so pleased. Exactly. That's good. And of course, Sarah says, when I think of veganism, mm. well, it's actually the definition of veganism. Yeah, it's not her opinion. It's, yeah. it's yeah. the way it is. It's mm -hmm. fact. And I think if I was to be a vegan, it'd be a little bit of a transition because there are some products, honestly, that I do use that are not cruelty free. Totally yeah. understandable, totally normal. The same goes for pretty much everyone. So... Mm -hmm. Not an issue whatsoever. And also, the video we mentioned at the beginning, uh, you're either vegan or you're not, talks about this. That's right. It's the products that you buy after you go vegan. Yeah. It's not the products that you still have in your home. That you bought before, before. you went vegan. You know. Right. I am a flexitarian, so basically what that is, that is someone who is about 90%, if not 95% vegan. When they're at home, they eat vegan food. If they go out somewhere to eat, they try their best to eat as vegan as possible. So again, similar to what we said before, mm. as vegan as possible, what does that mean? You are either contributing to the violence or you're not. Yeah. It is possible in 2018 yes. to eat vegan. Yes. Okay. Every um, time you go out. I every mean, time you go out. I mean, we've been doing it for seven years and there are people who have been doing it a lot longer than us. Yep. We've travelled the world. Happy Cow, wonderful app. Yeah. Um, What's well, a situation where you wouldn't, I mean, you'd have to be in the middle of nowhere. You're not, you're not in no, the middle no. of nowhere. She I mean, lives in Canada. That's right. You know? And we just went to the UK mm. and we spoke about this in our recent podcast episode where so many not yet vegan restaurants have now got heaps of different vegan options on their menus or separate meat separate vegan menus altogether. And we're talking the chain restaurants that you can find everywhere. And this is being replicated throughout Western countries, so. Yeah. So it's very easy, it's not, oh, if I, you know, as much no. as I can, it's 
as much as you want to. That's the thing. It's not, can I? It's, yeah. do I want to? Yeah. If I go to other people's houses and they're serving meat or something like that, I stay away from dairy. I stay away. But if they're serving meat, I don't want to be that person that doesn't partake in a meal or a certain festivity because I'm like, no, I'm vegan. I didn't want to be that person. Be that person. Be that person. Be that person with strong convictions for respect, peace, justice, compassion, uh, all of that. All of those values that are universal. <laughs> If we were, again, replacing the victim and talking about any other form of violence and any other form of discrimination against an individual, an innocent individual, would you want to be that person? Yeah? If you were in a group of um, people talking about racism and they were all pro, you know, they were all racist, they were saying racist things, they were being awful, would, would you, you want to be that person that says, you know what, this is actually really wrong? I don't want to be part of this. This is this is not a good thing to be saying and to be participating in. Or instead, so as not to rock the boat and not offend anyone, would you not say anything or even worse, partake in the racism? What this shows, that's human psychology. We all want to fit in. We all want to do what the majority is doing. Yeah. And the day will come where it'll be... You know, those still eating animal products will be the odd ones out. Mm. And they will be that person. And if you want to watch a mockumentary based on that scenario, yeah. watch Carnage. And we reviewed the film, we'll link it below. Amazing uh, mockumentary. Also, I must say, the scenario that uh, Sarah raised reminded me very much of Kristen New. Mm -hmm. Remember her? Mm -hmm. And we made a response video, which we'll link below. She was yeah. talking about eating traditional dishes prepared by a grandmother, yeah. Korean grandmother. And then um, there was the... Uh, Hunger Games actor, I forget his mm. name, but he was saying, oh, when I go to my grandmother's, I think she makes a mac and cheese or something like that, and I, I don't want to be disrespectful and what have you. Um, I've had friends, I've even had my husband as that person, but not towards veganism, but towards gluten. And he'd go over to people's houses and be like, oh, no, no, I don't eat that because I don't eat gluten. People were offended. People tried their best to make a beautiful meal, or they would just make a beautiful meal, and then Kieran would refuse it because he didn't have gluten. We're not talking about a tummy ache from gluten. We're talking about someone else's life. This is an important issue. Yeah, to compare the two, uh, mm. gluten and the life of an animal, is very disrespectful to animals. Yeah. Very disrespectful. And there's a reason for that, which we'll get to. But, um, <clears throat> see, here's the thing. If you just rock up, and we've got videos on this, if you just rock up to a dinner, to your friend's place, and uh, they've, mm. they've prepared this meal, and you're like, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't eat anything here. I'm vegan, or I'm gluten-free, or I'm whatever. They're gonna be like, hello, you didn't think to tell me a little bit earlier on, or what is this, yeah. or I didn't know. So of course it's disrespectful. Of course they're gonna be a little bit annoyed. Of course you're gonna be that person. What you need to do is communicate with that person ahead of time. And if they're your family members or your friends and you're going over to share a meal, then it shouldn't be a problem. You just call them up and say, hey, I'm really excited about, you know, coming over for whatever dinner or occasion it is. Um, just wanted to let you know, I've made some changes. I actually, at the moment, I'm not eating any animal products. You don't even have to use the word vegan, right? You can just say, I'm not eating any animal products at the moment. So here are the things that I can eat. Um, I'm more than happy to bring a dish that we can all share as well. I don't want to put you out. Right? Bring your own vegan food as well. Make something you can all share. You don't have to go into the reasons why. And if they do ask why, you can say, well, that's a, a whole discussion. I'm happy to talk to you about that some other time. You could even just stay focused on the health side. Yeah. You know, and, and don't even worry about getting into the ethics initially. Just, I'm feeling better in my body when I'm not eating animal products. Oh, or I'm watching my cholesterol. You know, I'm watching my weight. So many things you can say. So you need to tell that person ahead of time. They can prepare, bring your own food, share with them. That's how you get around it. And if they're still offended, if they're offended because you say, can I have some more potatoes instead of the animal flesh? Then you have to question, how good of a friend are they? Right? You're asking for no body parts on your plate. Why are they offended by that? So communicate with those people in your life. Make it easier for everybody. Don't just turn up and assume. 
Because assuming makes an ass out of you and me, as the saying goes. Yeah. I just think it's kind of exhausting. A little bit of minor, minor inconvenience of contacting your host ahead of time relative to the life of someone who doesn't want to die, a sentient being. What's exhausting is having to make this video again when we said the same thing two years ago and hearing the same excuses. That's true. That's exhausting. So what's exhausting, Sarah, is um, this year, for example, we have attended a lot of safe movement vigils. And what that means is we've spent a lot of time standing at the front of slaughterhouses with other activists, watching truck after truck after truck after truck full of animals drive these individual beings to their murder. Needless murder. It is exhausting having to watch that. It is exhausting to have to document that footage and, and create content and share it and have these conversations over and over and over again. To try to get people to stop hurting innocent animals who don't want to die. That's we what's don't exhausting. Need to. Making a phone call to your friend or your family member and saying, hey, can you put some extra potatoes in the oven for me and I'll, I'll drop the meat when I come over next Friday. Wow, what's that like, 30 seconds yeah. well, and a sentence? Yeah, shoot him a text, drop him an email. Come on, yeah. we need to We're keep perspective. We're all quick these days, you know. <laughs> it's true. It's true, we yeah. need to keep perspective. Yeah. It's kind of rude. Rude. Again. Rude to not participate in violence. Rude to not destroy the planet. Rude to care about your body. Rude to stand up for what you believe in. If Sarah's host was serving wow. dog, would it be rude to refuse? That's perfect. Would it be rude and an inconvenience? Or would you eat the Labrador? Would you eat the poodle? Would you eat the cat? But like, that's just my personal opinion. Some people that are very vegan, and if you are, that's seriously so cool. Okay, again, it's not a trend, it's not a fad, it's not a fashion, it's nothing like that. It's an ethical stance, and which you explained earlier, in fact, so you have an understanding on what it is. Mm. But again, to compare it to something trivial like a And it's not is, if you're very vegan, no. again, you're either vegan or you're not. I really wish every person in the world would watch that video we yeah. made. Please share it for us down below. But some people could say like, but it's, wor like, it's worth it for the animals. It's worth it kind of offending people or making f people feel uncomfortable or just stating that you don't eat animals for the good of animals. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if we were the victim, we would think the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, we don't intend to offend people. We don't intend to put people out. What else did she say? What was the words? Hold on. If people feel uncomfortable or just stating that you don't eat at. Okay. Yeah, we don't intend to make people feel uncomfortable. If people feel uncomfortable by vegans not eating animals, then that's something they need to reflect on. If there's nothing wrong with eating animals, why would you be offended? Why would you feel uncomfortable? And again, someone's feelings cannot be compared to the life of a sentient being who doesn't want to die and doesn't have to. Yeah. The reason people feel uncomfortable is because in their hearts, they know it's wrong. They know they don't need to do it, especially in 2018. So much information out there. And this reminds me of previous social justice issues yep. whereby the people advocating for the abolition of a particular form of discrimination would have initially been met with resistance. People would have felt uncomfortable and offended hearing their views in terms of wanting to abolish whatever form of discrimination it was. They weren't popular, no. but they were doing what was right. That's right, and we all needed. look back now and we go, wow, they were right. Yeah. And I just want to say right out of the get-go, I, <laughs> I don't care diddly squat about animals. That's possibly the most callous thing I've heard on YouTube, actually. Very, very callous. I think callous is the appropriate word. It's the way she stood it, though. Like, and the, and can the I laugh, just watch that again? The laugh I know. beforehand. I just, I gotta... And I just want to say right out of the get-go, I don't... <laughs> I don't care diddly squat about animals. I know. That's really bad. <laughs> what? Yeah. What made you think, Sarah, that getting on the internet <clears throat> and saying that the way you did would ever result in anything good? And of course, I, if you didn't I, mean it as it was delivered, as you said it, then of course when you're editing it, you would go, uh, uh, that's yeah, not it's so not so cool. great. Yeah, I mean, we've said things when we're recording and it's like, ah, that's not good. We've got to take that out, you know? Yeah. It, it, that's why you edit. You don't, you're not live streaming. 
that <clears throat> wow I don't care diddly squat about animals now again let's replace the victim I don't care diddly squat about gay people I don't care diddly squat about people of different colors I don't care diddly squat about women I don't care, care diddly squat about uh, people of different abled bodies right and I know people are gonna say oh you can't compare humans to animals well guess what we're all animals there are human animals and non-human animals we're mammals mammals or animals this is basic biology we learned this in school now here's the thing you don't have to love animals you don't even have to like animals to be vegan you just have to respect the fact that they have a right to life and if we don't need to kill them which we don't then we shouldn't we should just respect their right to life you definitely don't have to be one of those people you don't have to be a cat lady all right you don't have to live with 50 cats in your apartment not at all i'm i don't like dogs i don't like cats i don't like rodents i don't like animals jungle animals farm animals i am not an animal person that's totally fine totally again fine. you don't have to be would be repeating ourselves but i will add in here that sarah I can relate to you so much with this. I am not an animal person, and I know this sounds really strange. Natasha, you're wearing vegan clothing with animals on them, and you're, and you're an, an animal activist. rights activist. And what's wrong with you? Seriously, when I was growing up, I was terrified of animals. Um, I was scared of our family dog, and I wouldn't go outdoors. And we'd always have, you know, like the security screen mm -hmm. closed, and I wouldn't go outside. And my mum and dad were like, well, what are we going to do? We've got this dog and our child won't go outside to play because I was so afraid because the dog would jump up and I was small. Mm -hmm. Terrified of cats. I've had a cat phobia, phobia my whole life, right? Yeah, until very recently. Yeah, we've been staying with people who have cats in their home. This and is only this year. Like, I'm literally, <laughs> I'm getting to, I'm getting to the, but I'm okay now. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm actually allergic to a lot of animals, uh, dogs especially, actually, and horses, and mm -hmm. so they make me sneeze. They, ha I have problems breathing. Their hair just gets into my nostrils. I'm not great with animals, but that doesn't mean that I should pay someone to slit their throat so I can eat their bodies. I also don't like a lot of humans. Doesn't mean I can go around and murder humans, right? <laughs> True. Absolutely, I concur. I feel the same way. So, we don't have to love someone to know it's wrong to kill them. I'm not an animal person, and because of that, I'm not offended or hurt when someone eats meat. So, that's... Well, I'm not hurt or offended with some when someone eats meat either. I'm disappointed and I'm disgusted. Yeah, but They're it, the words it depends. That I would use. If the person is ignorant to what happens to animals and the fact that we don't need to eat them in order to survive mm -hmm. in fact we're much healthier and can thrive without eating them mm -hmm. uh, and if they're ignorant to the devastating effect that animal agriculture has on the environment mm -hmm. then uh yeah mm. there's no judgment no offense mm -hmm. no nothing because at one point every vegan didn't know any better either and mm -hmm. When we were uh, raised, we were all indoctrinated to believe that eating anim animals was normal, natural, and necessary uh, by every institution in our society, by exactly. our parents, families, religions, schools, uh, education system, medical system, media, everything. So There's no reason no. to feel like that. Um, once people know and still continue to eat animal products... Which Sarah does know better. We made that video more than two years ago and she's yeah. watched documentaries like Cowspiracy. It shows a real lack of empathy mm. and compassion, which are qualities that are, again, universally respected, aren't they? Mm -hmm. The thing that got a lot of people was that Sarah's a Christian. Her channel is um, largely talking about her faith and this is what was so bizarre for people to hear her say these things um, as a Christian, which, you know, is supposed to be about compassion and love and, and real beautiful things. But she's totally dismissing the life of animals and kind of laughing off the suffering of animals. It was, wow. Some people say, oh, Sarah, you gotta like be there to witness it. Like, have you ever actually seen like a cow die or a chicken die? I've seen cows being put down and chickens and pigs. And I never, honestly, and I say this like being very cautious how I say it, I never had a bone in my body that felt bad. Okay, so they're not put down. Put down infers that they were 
uh, sick, sick and, and, that, and they were euthanized. Yeah. Um, when in actual fact, they are murdered violently. There's a, they don't go willingly to their deaths. They resist. We have to overpower them, restrain them, bolt gun them in the head, which is often ineffective and has to be done repeatedly while they continue to jump out of the knock box. They have, their eyes are bug-eyed from fear. They can sometimes see their friends and family members being killed in front of them and know then what's coming next. Surrounded by blood, slaughterhouses get drenched in blood, like red floor, red walls, everything. They it, shit themselves from fear, yeah, literally. It is absolutely horrific, horrifying. Your worst nightmare that you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. So they're not put down. And I don't think, I don't know if she's seen that. I don't well, know. Well, the other thing is, about. over two years ago, in our response video, mm. we listed forks over knives for the health aspect, cowspiracy for the environmental aspect, we put in earthlings for the ethical aspect. Yeah. So she's had over two years to watch it. It probably sounds really wicked. It does. It does. It sounds callous. It does. And showing a lack of empathy, a serious lack of compassion really? and empathy. And I, oh, that's what I wanted to mention. This was the other really weird thing. This is her channel quote. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. What do you think the Lord's saying right now, Sarah? What do you think the Lord is saying? Saying... <laughs> You've just said, I know this sounds really wicked. Yeah, it does. It does not sound like a very nice thing. And I'm just questioning, what if anything other than the Bible has made Sarah feel so disconnected from her compassion and empathy for know, other sentient beings? There's always those veganism posters and posters against like animals dying and be animals being served on your plate and stuff. And I've never looked at a single one and gone like, oh my goodness, like, like I've never done that. So a, a meme with words uh, can be powerful, but it's unlikely to be as powerful as something like Earthlings. So Sarah, if you haven't watched Earthlings, we implore you to please watch it. In Alternatively, fact, you can watch Dominion. I was gonna say Dominion is the, the updated version, uh, the quality of the production is um with a recent lot higher. footage you could um, also watch land of hope and glory you could watch Farm it's all the Fridge, same thousand eyes all of them are linked below you just seeing throats being slit one way or another i've watched all the documentaries cowspiracy like all that stuff cowspiracy is about environment cowspiracy doesn't show diddly squat um, about slaughter. It I mean, just it's just shows the backyard one. slaughter. Of, well, I shouldn't say it just shows. It shows the mm. backyard slaughter of a duck who didn't want to die and wanted to live. But that's nothing compared to the footage that we're, you know, talking about in Earthlings and Dominion. So when she says all the footage, all the videos, I want to know specifically have you watched Earthlings? And if you have watched Earthlings and you can still bring yourself to say that. And you sat there for 90 minutes and took it all in, kept your eyes wide open, didn't look away, didn't get up to do something else, didn't get distracted by your phone. That's distressing and concerning. And we're talking about a mother, somebody who is bringing the next generation into the world. And is responsible for instilling values, wow. universally accepted, desirable values like peace, justice, compassion, respect. I find it distressing. And I never came to a point where I was really turned away from eating meat completely. I would highly suggest you go into a slaughterhouse. Go in, see for yourself, smell the blood, smell the feces. Listen to the screams, my God. Or at the, the very least, bear alone. witness at a save movement vigil mm. outside the front of a slaughterhouse. Yeah, you're not getting close enough, girl. You gotta get right in there. But what made me actually kind of turn away from it in a little bit of a sense was knowing actually how bad it is for the planet. Good. Our video was heavily focused on the environment because that's what she was talking about two years ago. That's right. All of the statistics and facts uh, mm -hmm. from Cowspiracy we've actually included in our video or so, a hell of a lot of them. Again, doesn't matter what your reason is, just do it. Mm. I think the main issue is that so many people think animals are just as important as humans. It's not about <sighs> as important, it's simply about their right to life is as important, right? We explained this two years ago, exactly the same topic. I, I don't get it. We explained it to you, you watched it in detail. 
We're not saying that humans and animals are exactly the same. We're saying we're equal in our capacity to suffer. And therefore, why would we needlessly cause animals to suffer when we don't need to? And animals who are killed for food, for their clothing, for entertainment, for the pet industry, for medical testing, they all suffer. Animals don't have souls, and the Lord didn't make animals with souls. Animals have feelings. Animals have emotion, 110%. But there is no soul in an animal, and I will argue that till my dying breath. You might argue it until your dying breath, Sarah, which is actually very adamant. It sounds like you're extremely right. adamant about that. But you can't actually prove one way or another whether animals have souls or not. Therefore, it is not a moral justification. And even if you could prove that animals didn't have souls, that it would still not matter. be a moral justification for needlessly killing them. When it's clear that they can suffer and that they want to live and that we don't need to kill them in order to survive. In my mind, personally for me, people have souls and I would way rather shop ethically and save unborn babies and not support sweatshops and support men and women and children in slave labor. Massive deja vu, Sarah. You know that, that was exactly Are you what our video was about. You watched it, you've seen it. It was it's there ridiculous. in plain detail. You can do both. It's not an either or. It We're is totally within your capacity to do both. We explained to Sarah that animal agriculture also affects humans Exploits in terrible humans. ways. Mass exploitation. There is human trafficking. Trafficking. There is slavery. There is appalling work conditions for people, you know, in this industry. So, yeah, if you care about humans, then you should be vegan by default. You're helping both. They're not mutually exclusive. I know some people can actually do both. Uh, There's a thought. Uh, and it's not can do both. It's choose to do both. And again, as we said, that's your most direct point of control, what you're putting on your fork three times a day. And the reason why, again, I'm not willing to go to someone's house and miss out on their labor of love towards me if they made something with some fish in it or if there is some chicken in the pasta. The irony here, my just brain melt, brain melt. We explained to Sarah two years ago that there is slavery and human trafficking in the fish industry. But you're, you think that your host is cooking fish with a labour of love? First of all, it's a murdered body part on your plate. There is no love when it comes to killing someone who does not want to die. There is nothing loving about putting toxic, I don't want to call it food, toxic violence into your body. That's not loving. And yeah, I mean, as I just said, the fishing industry is rife with human rights uh, abuse. So. It, you, you're a walking contradiction. I don't understand. We, we said this in two years ago. Sometimes I do buy meat, absolutely. My husband likes it, my kids like it, so I buy it for them. But the ones that I buy is local, it's ethical, it's sustainable, and it's organic. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah! Okay. Local. <laughs> so local just means it hasn't traveled that far. Now, what does that matter when, as you know, the United Nations says that Greenhouse gas emissions from the animal agriculture industry are greater than those from the entire transport sector combined. Uh, whether sustainable. Some, whether someone has their head chopped off around the corner or um, in the other state makes no difference to the victim. Oh, Your Honour, this man is not guilty of rape and murder. The victim lived in the next block. She was local. Oh, well, in that case, it's all good. Yeah. Let's just go rape and murder our neighbours. Yeah. Hold on, love thy neighbour, as long as they're human animals and not non-human animals. Sustainable. Cowspiracy's tagline is the sustainability secret. A animal agriculture in no form is sustainable in a relative optimal sense. What was the other thing? Ethical. Ethical. The, the, e ethical, ethical. ethical killing is an oxymoron. Humane slaughter is an oxymoron. When we can ethically rape and ethically murder humans, then we'll talk. And we won't talk because it's not possible. And it's done in a proper way. I know some people can say that any type of killing of an animal is wrong. There's ways of doing it in a calm way or even in like a dignifying way. What does that look like, Sarah? A calm and dignified way of chopping someone someone's head off. Yeah, who doesn't want to die. Can we, we don't calmly have to. rape someone? Can we murder 
children with dignity. And again, if you're thinking, oh, but animals and humans are not the same. First of all, humans are animals. Uh, but if you're thinking human animals and non-human animals are not the same, in our capacity to suffer, we are the same because they are sentient beings with central nervous systems and pain receptors. Killing a non-human animal, they suffer the same way. That's all that matters, our capacity to suffer. And the way we determine whether something is humane is to ask if it is okay to do it to us. That's how we determine if something is humane to someone else. Is it okay if that was done to us? Just like people, when people are put to death, there's always a way that's way better than another. We're not talking about euthanasia. We're not talking about someone who is sick and suffering and chooses to end their life. We're talking about animals who are bred specifically to have their throat slit and head chopped off whilst they're still very young. A lot of these animals are still babies. And that's the only way that we can have animal products. The throat must be slit so that the heart can pump the blood out so it doesn't uh, make the meat go bad. Um, and the head is ultimately chopped off. So that's the only way it can be done. The animals are not asking for this. They don't need it. It's forced upon them. Very different to euthanasia. If a mass murderer played Beethoven while he was killing the, their victim, would that justify it because it was in a calm environment? I mean, that's really twisted. Yeah. Calmly killing someone. That, that's, that's, it, you, oh, wow. Mental gymnastics. Sarah's playing a lot of mental gymnastics. Scary mental gymnastics. Wicked, as she said. It is wicked. And I choose to support the farmers that do it in a way that's very, you can even say gentle. Oh my God, this woman has children. This woman has children. Gently kill someone who doesn't mm. want to die. Gently kill someone who doesn't want to die. Mm. Oh God. I There's actually... no good way or right way to do the wrong thing. And you know the thing is like, We've seen footage where they'll pat the animals and calm them right down and hold them in their lap. That is the most sinister way to kill someone. It's sadistic and it's the ultimate form of betrayal. Yeah. Gain their trust yeah. and then slit their throat. That wow. is even sinister. Worse. Sadistic. It's, it's, it's just sadistic. It's disgusting. Yeah. It's disgusting. Sometimes I'll go months without eating any type of meat, any type of dairy, and it's awesome. I'm dairy intolerant anyway, so it's something I usually keep like a distance from. You're not a baby cow, Sarah. You're not a baby cow. That's why you keep your distance from it, okay? Most people are lactose intolerant because we're not baby cows. If I said, oh, sometimes I go months without making a racist remark, how would that sound? It's good, it's better than making a racist remark every single day, but it's obviously still not optimal, is it? And <clears throat> we're not talking about words, we're talking about actions here. We're talking about taking someone's life. Exactly. And again, don't put people down for just the things that they eat or they do. A lot of people are still trying to kind of figure things out, what they like, what they don't, what they want to change. And we just need to encourage that. We gotta stick together. No, we need to educate. And we did that with yourself, Sarah, over two years ago, and you still going in the We're same circles. Literally the same, she's saying the same things two years later. Now, Very egocentric, <clears throat> egocentric mm -hmm. anthropocentric perspective. Um, if people don't know any better, then that's different. But if they know better, they know better, then they have a moral duty to do better. Yeah. Now, what has changed in those two years is that um, Sarah had one baby. I think she, Ivy was maybe six months old mm -hmm. in that first video. Uh, she then had a second baby and now she's now pregnant with her third. She has three children in her care and she's only 23 years old we didn't, I didn't realize this no um, in one of the videos I don't know if it's the first one or the second one she says at some point I'm only 23 years old I have a lot to learn yes yes everyone has a lot to learn this is a thing we're always learning no matter what our age we're always evolving it never stops this is the journey of life we get that but at 23 if you're going to bring three kids into this world already and her video from two years ago said she wanted four so you know by 2020 she's probably gonna reach her quota that's a lot of responsibility yes you've made great improvements in your diet so far but this mentality that you have and the things that are coming out of your mouth are not great for your kids to hear I actually hope that they never see these videos because if I was a mother I would be deadly embarrassed and ashamed to have my child hear me say something so 
wicked, as we said. Callous, heartless, soulless. Not compassionate. Just, like, don't you teach them that animals are lovely and we're, we're all friends and we don't want to hurt our friends. Like, what are you going to teach them? I, I'm because really Because if concerned. given a choice, I, I the children it. will not hurt animals. We indoctrinate them to consume the dismembered body parts and secretions of these murdered beings. But if we never gave it to them, they would never go and kill a cow. And they couldn't, in fact, that's without right. a, uh, a tool or utensil. And if you can say Certainly this... Certainly can't bite into it. That's right. Exactly. Not with these canines. <laughs> if you can say these things on camera to thousands and thousands of people around the world, what are you going to say to your kids behind closed doors when people aren't scrutinising you? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, you do have a lot to learn. Yeah. But with giving you that's everything right. you needed... To, to get yourself educated that's about right. this topic In, two years ago. That's right. Information acquired is knowledge. Knowledge yes. applied is wisdom. And you have the knowledge because we gave you the information, but you haven't applied it. And so you are lacking in the wisdom department, which is not promising for a mother of to be of three. Yeah. All right. That's the first video. My God, this is exhausting. Deja vu. Second video. We're going to just make some quick notes here. Okay. We yeah. haven't cut it up. Okay, but. so the video was made by Sarah because damage control. She had a lot of people in the comments section saying, I'm unsubscribing, this was really callous the way you spoke about animals. Uh, and Sarah, in her response, she doubled down and she made, she backpedaled and she made a lot of contradictions as a result. If you watch the first one and the second one, it's like, no, no, yeah. no, 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 yeah. you did not. No, she's, you, she, see, you, know, you, know, you know what you meant to the first right. one, she just yeah, yeah. contradicted it. Yeah, she was saying, uh, yeah. you know, when I said I don't care diddly squat about animals, uh, it's not what I meant. Um, I, what I meant was I don't have a desire to live with any companion animals in my home because it's not a suitable environment for them. Being dishonest. That is being dishonest. Mm. Okay. I don't care for animals in the same way that I don't care for carrots. I'm not a carrot lover, but I'll eat carrots if they're served to me. It's respectful. That is, that is such a bizarre comment. I mean, you're comparing a sentient being with feelings with family with with deep emotions to a vegetable yeah come on but this is yeah and that's why we call people in mm. uh, a state in which they can't think or feel uh, it, they're in a vegetative state mm, they're, they're vegetables. vegetables you know she said the worth of a human is significantly greater than any animal highly debatable <laughs> highly debatable Sarah if, yeah, go on. If we, if humans were to disappear from the face of this earth, every other being and ecosystem on this planet would benefit. There's not a would single flourish. would flourish and thrive and return to its beautiful state of Eden, if you like. Now we, again, we said this two years ago. We showed her, you know, that great uh, video called Man, where man's just been this destructive force and we'll link doing what amazing man does. video. If uh, bees were to disappear from the face of the planet, we'd have about five years. You know, ants. Ants are crucial to yeah. the ecosystem. Ants and bees are far more important than humans. So. Humans disappear, everything gets better. Ants and bees disappeared, we're finished. So she decided to talk more about the whole animals don't have souls issue. And... Well, it's interesting because at one point in the video she says, I'm more of a proof person because somebody in the comments said, uh, if you look at an animal, I see a soul. Yeah. And she says, oh, well, I'm more of a proof person. But your proof, Sarah, is based on faith. Yeah. Therefore, it's no proof at all. So yeah, she's basing... your belief that animals don't have souls is can be proved no more than somebody else's belief who says that animals do have souls. Mm. Your, the, the Bible is not proof. No, and are we seriously, in, in 2018, are we going to justify what we do based on a book written 2,000 years ago? Yeah, there are passages in the Bible that frown Come upon on. homosexuality. Does that morally justify me to be homophobic? Obviously not. No, we need to start thinking critical. And this is, you know, if you have, if you're religious, this is not to offend religious people. You believe whatever you want to believe, fine. Just don't right? hurt animals. Just don't hurt animals or other that's people. It. That's Do, it. I mean, that's, that's the irony that religion is about. Compassion, Compassion peace, love. justice, respect, love. You know, universally we, accepted values. We're just extending that circle of compassion to non-human animals. Isn't that supposed to be a good thing? 
not a bad thing. We already do that with certain species of anim non-human animals in the West, like yes. cats and dogs, as Sarah alluded to in, in, a, in a video. Yes. We just need to extend that to include the cows, the pigs, the chickens, the ducks, the turkeys, yes. the fish, and all the other animals that we exploit. And of course, no religion on earth mandates that we need to eat animals. That's so you right. can find passages saying yes and no, whatever. So it doesn't it... mandate that you have to, therefore it's a personal choice. Now your personal choice ends being personal, it stops being personal, when it involves the life of someone else. Okay, I think Colin Patrick Godreau says, my right to throw my fist ends at your nose. It's not a personal choice to eat animals. Then she says, animals are here for us. We have authority over animals. The Bible says. Well, these are the same kind of excuses that slave owners used during human slavery yeah you know and we look back at those excuses today and we're like they were not morally justifiable excuses how did we actually ever do that and that's the way we'll look back at animal rights abuses in uh, in time to come so to finish up her video she decided to bring up abortion of all things abortion the the whew, divider um, the comments well, it's a red herring. It, it really is, but the comments under the video were like, I cannot believe you brought up the topic of abortion when you were trying to explain your first video, which went real south real fast. So it was just like... It's a distraction. It, it's a train wreck, actually. It was a train wreck. The more and, interesting question is, can anyone who is pro-life not be vegan? Something to ponder. That is the end of a very long response video, Sarah. Just, just a lot of deja vu, you know, incredible. we're repeating the same things we did two mm. years ago. Very disappointing. Anyhow, a final positive possible end to this is that we noticed, of course, a lot of her followers are young Christian women. A lot of them are, are young mothers and um, like herself, you know, they're, they're following someone that they can relate to. And so they were quite concerned and shocked by the things that she had said about animals and um, they were, I think the way we were interpreting their comments were maybe they were reevaluating the way they thought about animals. And, you know, they were saying, like, what you're saying is not 100% true, Sarah, and that's not what the Bible meant. And Or perhaps they may have felt like Sarah and thought like Sarah at one time based on their own interpretation of the Bible. Yeah. Uh, but hearing Sarah talk about it the way she did and sound so callous and harsh. Maybe, and harsh. They perhaps thought, oh, maybe mm. I need to reflect on those thoughts yeah. that I have and those beliefs because they do sound a little heartless and callous. Yeah, so I think when it I created hear them from someone else. Exactly, I think it created discussion, mm. healthy discussion, um, and basically a lot of these uh, a lot of these followers were not impressed by her comments. They were not supporting her. They were being many of them unsubscribed. That's right, and yeah. they, were, they were just thinking critically about this. Yeah. So I think that's a positive silver lining. Silver lining, yeah. you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. What do you guys think? <laughs> well, You've heard us talk about it. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. Please leave us a comment down below. Get a discussion started. Again, just as with the first video for Sarah, this is not a hate no. video. This is purely educational. So please, no hateful comments. Uh, at all, make sure they're constructive criticism. We're very frustrated. Well, no, we got passionate during this. Well, we speak for animals the way we would want someone to speak for us if we were in their position. It is as yeah. simple as that. And if you were thinking that you know, we've got hot under the collar or what have you, again, reevaluate it from the victim's mm -hmm. perspective, not from the oppressor or the perpetrator, because ultimately all forms of injustice must always be assessed from the victim's point of view. And I think. I think people should be hot under the collar about this. I think people should be angry. I think people should be concerned. As we say, and if you're not angry, you're not paying attention because there's a lot of bad stuff going on in the world that doesn't need to happen. It doesn't need to happen and it's not going to change unless we start taking action taking on the information that up. we have. You know? And the information is all there. It's, we gave it to Sarah two years ago. It's linked below now for anyone who wants to learn more. So, Groundhog Day. That's it. We're done. Like, Lovely share, meal. subscribe. Hope you enjoyed it. I didn't really taste yeah. it because, you know, that's a thing. You're responding and you're not really... No, it was lovely. Thank you. You're very welcome. Like, share, comment, subscribe. And remember until next time that going vegan is not the most we can do. It is the absolute least we can do. Thanks for watching. See you next video. Bye, guys.